Hey everybody, Kiru Paul here. Welcome to the channel. If you've been following the channel, you know that uh, as of late, I've been filming some shorts during my morning walks and uh, shorts are limited to less than 60 seconds. So I've been doing like a phrase of the day, something like that. Well, in response to my last short, a viewer wrote, hey, how about a video where you tell us how to translate no matter how something, like no matter how difficult a language is, I'm going to learn it. No matter how expensive something is, I'm going to buy it. No matter how far something is, I'm going to go. That beginning section. I love the suggestion, but I really couldn't put it in a short and reduce it to a minute. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be showing you a construction that you can use to translate sentences like this correctly every single time. And here's the construction. No importa lo. And here in this gap, you're going to put your adjective, which is going to agree in number and gender with whatever we're talking about. You'll see what I mean as we go through some examples. Then we have K. After K, you're going to put the verb here, but it's going to have to be in the subjunctive mood. Now, I know I talk about the subjunctive a lot and people are like, oh, Paul talks about it all the time. I didn't plan this. It's so interwoven in Spanish that you have to learn it. And one of the easiest ways to learn it is to learn constructions like this or formulas, some people call them, and to know what triggers it. In this formula, construction, whatever you want to call it, it'll always use the present subjunctive in this box. So next blank over, you're going to put the subject. You may already be like, okay, this is getting really complex. I'm never going to get this. Don't worry. You're going to get it. First of all, let's choose a really simple sentence. How about the apple is expensive? La manzana es cara. Pretty easy, right? So we have a subject, la manzana, the apple. We have a verb in there, but it's in the present indicative. But at least we know what verb we're dealing with, right? Ser. And we have an adjective, cara. So now we have enough to work with. Let's go ahead and see if we can translate this phrase. No matter how expensive the apple is, let's look at our construction. It's going to start the same way every single time with no importa lo. Our adjective is going to go right in here. We're going to take our cara, drop it in. No importa lo cara que. Now, right after here, this has to be in the present subjunctive, which our verb is in the present indicative, right? Now, if you don't know how to conjugate into the subjunctive, I have a video to show you how to do that. How to conjugate is easy. Knowing when can be the tricky part. And in this construction, this will always be in the present subjunctive. Always. So the present subjunctive of ser, right? Third person is going to be sea. So what are we still lacking? The subject. What's the subject? La manzana. We're going to drop that in. Throw it all together. What do we get? No importa lo cara que sea la manzana, and then whatever. I'm still going to buy it, whatever. You can plug in whatever you want on the end of this, but that's our phrase. That's it. Now you may be looking at that and go, okay, look at that low. Why is that low translating as how in English? The key is here to not overthink it. This is a formula. You're dropping in words. Don't overthink it. You're going to make a grammatically correct phrase every single time. Now, when I teach this method to folks that are more math oriented, they're like, oh, you just made language into a mathematical formula. I can just change variables and say anything I want. And they're like, I finally get it. Now, folks that aren't math oriented, when I use words like formulas and things, they go, hmm. One student goes, hey, you just turned Spanish into those old Mad Libs books where it just says like adjective noun, and you keep changing those, but the sentence stays the same, but you can say all kinds of things. And I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I, I guess it's more like Mad Libs. Hmm. Could be like that. Whatever works for you. Okay. So let's try this again. How about, um, the task is difficult. La tarea es difícil, right? Simple sentence. Now we're going to say, no matter how difficult the task is, see if you can do this one. Here's your formula or your mad libs thing or whatever works for you. Can you make that phrase? Let's see how you did. First part of a phrase is never going to change, right? No importa lo doesn't change. Right here, we're going to drop in our adjective. Exactly, it has to agree in number and gender, which in our little mini sentence it did. K doesn't change. Now we need a verb in the present subjunctive. Down here in our simple sentence, it's in the present indicative, but you just heard that the present subjunctive third person is sea, right? We just used it. And that's why these types of constructions are going to help you learn the subjunctive more easily because you're using it all the time. Pretty soon it's going to be, oh, it's sea. I hear it all the time. It's sea. 
and then our subject follows if we need to include it, la tarea. Put it all together, what do we get? No importa lo difícil que sea la tarea, blah, blah, blah. Whatever motivational thing you want to stick on the end of that. Now, let's take that sentence and make it plural. Las tareas son difíciles. The tasks are difficult. Okay, how's this going to change things? It's not going to be too bad. You think you can do it? You want to take a stab at it? Here's our formula or your Mad Lib. I'll give you a second. Shouldn't take too long. All right, let's go ahead and see what you got. So we're going to pop in our adjective. In this case, it's degrees in number and gender, right? So it's plural here. Difíciles. After K, what are we going to put here? Our verb, but it's going to have to be in the subjunctive. Here it's not. The subjunctive would be sean. So we put sean in there. And then we're going to put our subject, right? What is it? Las tareas. We're going to stick it all together. What do we get? This is when you're supposed to say it. I can't do all these for you. No importa lo difíciles que sean las tareas, blah, blah, blah. This isn't too bad, right? I don't think it's too bad. How about something like this? Um, no matter how far you are from me, whatever, I still love you, blah, blah, blah. No matter how far you are from me. That's what we're going to be doing. So if you need to, we can pop it into a simple sentence, right? You're far from me. Estás lejos de mí. Now, you might have been going, okay, what about tú? Tú estás lejos de mí. Now, remember, and we say this a lot, in Spanish, if the subject is known or implied, maybe because the verb you're using, etc., then we drop it. And when we're using the tú form or the yo form, generally, you're not going to see those words. So we just would say, estás lejos de mí. You're far from me. So we have our verbs. We got everything still there, right? Let's plug it in. What's our adjective? Lejos. Now we're still going to need this other stuff, right? So we're going to stick it in there too. De mi. Lejos de mi. Right after que, we got our verb. And the subjunct would be estés. So we plug it in. Now here's where we would stick our subject right on the end. But as I just explained, we tend to drop tu, right? We drop it. So we're still going to drop it. So we don't need it right there. No importa lo lejos de mí que estés, whatever. Te quiero, I love you, or siempre estás conmigo, or you're always with me, or siempre estás en mi corazón, you're always in my heart. Whatever you want to add at the end. You getting the hang of these things? They're not that bad, right? In order to practice this, what I want you to do is to think of simple sentences like, um, you know, when something's very arduous or some trip or something, or the, the journey, a lot of times we'll say like el camino, the road is, is long and hard, things like that. Try to come up with ways to do that. So if I say, let's keep it simple. Um, el camino es largo. The road is long. Can you make that into no matter how long the road is? And what do you get when you plug all that stuff in? And use the present subjunctive. No importa lo largo que sea el camino. The most difficult thing for me in these lessons is to speak that slowly because I kind of get tongue-tied doing it. Here's your simple phrase to play with. You're intelligent. Can you translate that? Eres inteligente. Eres inteligente. We're going to be plugging it in, but I'm actually going to give you a full sentence this time. And here it is. No matter how intelligent you are, there will always be somebody more intelligent. Now, I really only care if you can translate that first part of the phrase, but for you folks that want a complete sentence, there you go. You need me to help you with this one? I don't think so. Maybe with that conjugation of the present subjunctive, if you haven't learned those, but I got to tell you, it's very close to something you've already heard because we're using the verb said, right? Okay, let's jump in there. No importa lo inteligente que seas, siempre habrá alguien más inteligente. Now, obviously, when you talk to people, you may speed it up a little bit. No importa lo inteligente que seas, siempre habrá alguien más inteligente. Something like that, maybe. Whatever your rate is. All right. When you're making sentences on your own, you may want to use a couple of adjectives, right? You want to just limit yourself to one. What if you want to say, it doesn't matter how long and hard the road or the journey is, right? You're already wondering, okay, do I use another low, right? Do I need another low? No, you don't. You're just still going to be putting these together with that little E and dropping them right in that gap, right? Right in the formula, right in the mad lib line. We're going to start the same way. No importa lo. That didn't change. Now we're going to drop our two adjectives in. Duro y 
largo. The K doesn't change. We're back to our verb, right? Which by now should frankly be super easy because we keep saying sea over and over. Put it all together, right? This is not that difficult, is it? Well, that's it for the video. I encourage you to use this construction during the day, make a simple sentence, and then plug in all those things into the more complex one. And, uh, you know, just get a feel for it. Well, until next time, hasta luego.